Welcome back to the Pick Show on the podcast. Doug Maurice, Austin Ward, Bill Landis, Ohio State at Rutgers on Saturday. And that means Berm and Austin are going to Piscataway. Austin, you vibing on this or what, man? America's favorite road trip, just cruising across Pennsylvania, birthplace of some greatness and some others. Um, and then heading in uh, to Piscataway for, I don't just uh, there's always so much excitement in the air when you get there and onto this commuter campus that's covered in concrete <laughs> and you know not a tree I, for miles <laughs> i bless i will say i've warmed to it <laughs> i don't know if it's because of berm's passion for it um but you know we've had some good times in piscataway we've seen some interesting football um Fan base, not usually that that jazz to show up for any of these games. It's like the Super Bowl for everybody else in the Big Ten, and Rutgers is like, eh. So I, I'm curious to know if it'll be different this week because they're 6-2, and two and, and Greg Schiano seems to have got uh, at least his team excited to go out there. We'll see at noon on Saturday if that translates to the fan base. But, yes, it will be a, a lengthy road trip. Uh, you know, Berm didn't want to do back-to-back in the vehicle, so that's what we'll do. We're going to drive like we always do to beautiful uh, New Jersey, the sewage state. (laughs) And with that, let's talk about this fantastic season that (laughs) Rutgers is having and why everybody there is so excited. As you mentioned, Austin Rutgers is six and two. This line is 18 and a half or 19. You can get Ohio State minus 19 on DraftKings as we record at minus 108, uh, minus 115 on FanDuel if you only want to take it at minus 18 and a half. So it's you know, around that number of the over under is 42 and a half. And that's a kind of a low total Landis that I think obviously is related to the fact that this Rutgers defense has performed pretty well. They have a couple standout yeah. guys, right? Mohamed Touré at linebacker made all made our all north midseason team. Good safety. Greg Shiano's a defensive coach. Looking at some of the teams they've played, though, I, I do have some questions about like how good exactly is the Rutgers defense? How good do you think it is, Bill? I think they're pretty good. I think this is the best defense they've had probably since they've joined the Big Ten. Um, they are 13th in the country in scoring defense. Like to, to your point, they've not played a bunch of offensive juggernauts. They they got Virginia Tech early in the year before Virginia Tech like switched its quarterback and got some stuff turned around. Um, the best offense they've played by far has been Michigan's. They held that offense to 31 points. Um, I think one of those was a defensive score. So it was like a couple touchdowns and a field goal against Michigan's offense. So so I think they're good. They limit explosive plays. They're really good against the pass. Um, they're number two in yards per game and number six in efficiency in passing defense. And they're solid against the run, too. They're, 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 teams have gotten them a little bit running the football. Like Michigan ran for 200 yards. Wisconsin ran for 200 yards. But the yards per carry is not exceptionally high. You kind of have to grind it down the field uh, against this defense. And then they're 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 not tremendous in the red zone. They're about average in terms of red zone defense. Um, but they're not, you know, they're not a sieve down there either. So they're, they're pretty good. They're well coached. Um, I think they're fairly aggressive. And I think they are, they are going to give Ohio State some challenges this week. So that Michigan game, for instance, right, they held Michigan to 31. Here were the drives for Michigan in that game. Michigan punted on its first drive, then touchdown, missed a field goal, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, 10 plays run out the end of the game. So they only mm-hmm. stopped Michigan once. It's just once. the drives were long and took forever. This is a defense that limits explosive plays for Rutgers. Ohio State and Rutgers are the only two teams in the country that have not given up a play of 40 yards or more. So that's good for Rutgers where they are vulnerable is grinding out a run game. I don't know that that's, that that's what Michigan does. That's what Penn state wants to do. I don't know if that's what Ohio state is going to try to do on Saturday. Austin, we did bill and I did a big uh, Kyle McCord, you know, talking about stuff for two hours with the quarterback. Yeah. We couldn't get to everything, but this is a question that a texter asked that I want to get your thoughts on. It's Drew. The Wisconsin game was Kyle McCord's Tulsa game, that game for C.J. Stroud in 2021. And I have every reason to believe he will come into form over the next few weeks. The idea of, okay, maybe the best way to attack Rutgers is to grind out the run game, or Kyle McCord is going to learn from what went wrong at Wisconsin, and this is the beginning of something. Kyle McCord comes out and has a big game. What seems more likely to you, Austin? I don't know how big the game will be, Doug, but I, I do tend to agree that 
uh, as things go forward into November, that this Ohio State passing attack is going to get more explosive and more dangerous. Uh, to me, uh, and I've mentioned this to both of you guys throughout the week, like Tulsa is a fair comparison. I think that, that Drew makes a great point there in the text, but I, I really I keep looking back because of the similarities between C.J. Stroud's first start, uh, or not the first start, the first start in November, his ninth start on the road against the Big Ten West opponent at Nebraska, and those two picks that he threw there, and the post game that was like kind of really hostile towards him a little bit, um, even though he'd thrown for over 400 yards, the the focus was on when he didn't run the football and his decision making and the and the turnovers. And Ohio State wound up winning that game by nine, you know, on the road against a Big Ten West opponent. Not entirely dissimilar, but also not the exact same thing with Kyle McCord dealing with an injury. Um, the first throw for that pick down there in the red zone, we know that that can happen. But, you know, sometimes you have those starts when you were a first year starting quarterback. And even that can happen two months into your first season as a starter. That That's not uncommon to deal with some of those growing pains. And I think sometimes we we're in such a hurry to make sweeping assessments off of one game. And that's that's par for the course with college football because there's so few to evaluate. But it's another thing that you just, to me, as I look at it for Kyle McCord moving forward, and a lot of this will depend on the ankle and how comfortable he feels on that after the re-aggravation last week. Adding back Travion last week, adding in Emeka potentially on Saturday, continuing to grow and get more comfortable, the offensive line taking steps. I think all those things point to him being able to take a step forward. Does that mean 350 yards against Rutgers? I'd say probably not, but uh, enough to get back closer to 280, 290, 300, and, and maybe two or three scores? I think so. And all of that is designed to make sure that he continues to grow by the end of end of November, where you really want him to be playing his best and, and will probably have to play his best. When we think about the other side of the ball, how Rutgers might score points in this game, Landis, there, there's three things that I think that stand out to me. One is Gavin Wimsett, the quarterback who is a little bit like Jersey Terrell Pryor, right? I think mm. Terrell was like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He's more like 6'3". But he's just like a long striding, you know, big presence at quarterback that's been around for a while. One is Kamanon guy who is a good, solid running back in the Big Ten and is kind of grounded out, and they can lean on him. And then the third is special teams, right? This is what Greg Schiano does. Um, they have blocked 63 kicks in the 177 games with Greg Schiano as the head coach at Rutgers. 13 of them have turned into touchdowns. So it's like every other game, you know, like every – Two and a half games, they block a kick. They blocked a kick for they blocked a punt return for a touchdown against Indiana last week. So maybe they got that one out of the way, and Ohio State doesn't have to worry about it. I'm not sure who Ohio State's special teams coach is, so I'm not sure what that matchup will be like. I'm just not familiar with Ohio State special teams play. It seems like something that we don't have to really talk about very much. But Bill, um, those three things, right? Good running yeah. back, interesting quarterback, special teams. What's the what's most dangerous to Ohio State? I honestly think it might be the special teams piece. Um, now, like relying on scoring on special teams is is a pretty dubious proposition, I suppose. But but they are very good at it. They do a good job of, of weaponizing their special teams. They typically have wrinkles for Ohio State when it comes to special teams play. I'm sure they'll have a few in this game, um, whether that's like onside kick stuff or or um, gadget return plays. I, th I think we'll see a couple of those. The Gavit whims that being able to run is is a different thing from what Ohio State has seen this year. Um I think like Gavin Wimsett has I think two it's like 240 ish designed rushing yards this year. And I think the the highest a quarterback has that, that Ohio State has seen prior to him is like 80 something. It was Talia Tungavailoa who didn't do a whole lot with his legs against Ohio State. This is a different kind of offense. Like they just want to run the ball with their running back and their quarterback. And Gavin Wimsett did have a season high of carry, carries last week and a season high rushing and three rushing touchdowns last week against Indiana. So I don't know if that is uh, indicative of a shift with this offense where they're going to get him more involved because he, he had really not had been involved to that extent prior to that game. But I do think that's what they want to do. They want to hold on to the ball. They'll, they'll take it four yards at a time. It's It's not dissimilar from I think what Penn State wants to do they're they're probably just not quite as good at it as Penn State is um I'm not as worried about a running back against this defense I just think Ohio State and Jim Knowles do a pretty good job of limiting that when they are facing a team that is that is sort of running back centric but the quarterback run element is a different thing they have to account for um and the special teams I think are dangerous 
Common on guy averages 93 rushing yards per game. That's second in the Big Ten. I did look it up. Remember Isaiah Pacheco? Isaiah Pacheco? Yeah, sure he do. like plays for the best team in the NFL now. Yep. Uh, it was confusing to me when he started to get good with the Kansas City Chiefs after being a seventh round pick because I was like, he was at Rutgers. <laughs> what was that? So I looked it up. Kyle Isaiah Pacheco played four games against Ohio State in his career. He had 45 touches against Ohio State for 177 yards. That's 3.9 yards per touch. So this happens sometimes. In 20 years of covering Ohio State, Austin, there are guys who come through. Like Kirk Cousins, I was like, well, he sucks. Because like he played Ohio State, it's like I don't know, and now he's a he's a billionaire in yeah. the NFL, and so sometimes I'm very thrown off on what guys are <laughs> going to be because you threw you view them through an Ohio State lens. So my point is, Kamanunga is a good running back. Yeah. Isaiah Pacheco was a good player at Rutgers. He didn't really impact Ohio State, and as Bill said, with this Ohio State run defense, I don't know that Kamanunga is going to come and run up, run over the Buckeyes for sixty minutes. Yeah, there's probably like four other guys at, at Rutgers or Indiana that you could throw out as well. That was like everybody's raving about this person and they don't do anything against Ohio State. Well, there, there's often a reason for that. I think that's going to be the best episode of Kings of the North of the year when you guys go back through the last all decade guys who didn't get it done against Ohio State who are <laughs> yeah. rich as hell. Like that is going to be an <laughs> awesome one. Um, but, you know. You've seen that because there's good running backs. Like that even happens for Wisconsin. Like think about, you know, some of the games that uh, Jonathan Taylor or James White or Melvin Gordon had where the, in the Big Ten championship game. It's like Heisman Trophy candidate. What? This guy stinks. Yeah. He can't go anywhere. Um, that's more of a tribute to Ohio State than a knock on any of those guys. And, you know, the there that's often the differentiator between a Rutgers, um, Maryland this year. You may have one or two or, or three NFL dudes and guys who have high ceilings, but the problem is if you're running up against a team that has 20 or 30 uh, and might have 12 to 15 draft picks next year, Ohio State has a way of counteracting that just but with sheer overwhelming depth. Ohio State in the FEI rankings, right? A little bit more inside statistically. Ohio State's number one in defense. Now they passed Iowa. They're number 13 in offense. Rutgers is number 38 in defense. So again, like they're not giving up a lot of points, but like five of the offenses they faced are ranked 85th or lower. So I'm, I'm a little skeptical. 38th in defense is good. It's not great. 81st in offense. So again, we're looking at it like 18 and a half or 19. Austin Ward, we'll start with you. What is your pick for Ohio State Rutgers? Yeah, I, I do think that Ohio State will find a little bit higher gear here. And that's primarily because I think Emeka Ibuko will continue to open up more things and not just in the passing attack, but also some of the looks that we saw with uh, you know, the, the orbit motion and Xavier Johnson around the edge. I think that I love Xavier Johnson. I think Emeka can maybe take that also up a notch or two with effectiveness, and it'll also help Marvin Harrison Jr., who we know is going to see plenty of targets in this game. I don't think Ohio State will be intimidated by the statistical output from Rutgers defense throughout the year. And I don't think that Jim Knowles would be overly concerned about a team that doesn't look willing or able to throw. So I expect this will be a blowout. I have Ohio State winning 38 to 6, which is a cover and the over. And I'm trying to build in maybe maybe three to six points for what, what Bill talked about. I am on alert for something to go a rye on special teams for Ohio State. That's let the only way. Up, let me look up the coach. You keep talking. I'll see if okay. I can find him. Yes. See if you can find him. I think he makes half a million dollars a year, but I could <clears> be mistaken. <throat> um, it's good work if you can get it. So I, I think that maybe Rutgers will sneak up, steal, sneak or steal a possession, block a kick. Maybe we saw, we've seen them lay down in the end zone for a kickoff return. They Greg Schiano will pull out the tricks. Ohio State should be prepared for that, um, but. But even so, they've had at least one mishap, if not more, in every game for the last six weeks. And it goes back to that last November with some high profile mishaps. So that that shouldn't necessarily factor into my cover here for Ohio State. But I think that that may push it to the over uh, if if something like that gets wonky. Pete Fleming is what I found. Is that right? Pete mm. Fleming. Pete Fleming. Park. Um, Maybe not. Park. Park can we'll keep looking. Parked car. Yeah, can look. Look it up for us. 
But all right, so you are uh, a kind of a smooth cover here, and a little bit on the over. And again, people can uh, listen to Austin because he's been the best of us so far. He's four and four against the spread, and he is four and four on the totals. Landis, what you got? Uh, I have Ohio State 31 7, <clears throat> which is the identical score um, that Michigan beat Rutgers by, which is not intentional. I just kind of realized that right before we started recording this. Um, I too, I, I too think that Connor, Connor, come to your house. Connor came to my house. Yeah, he, the took, lowdown. He, he took off his sunglasses and said, Here's the plan. Um, I think Rutgers. Is there a light? Point, You're wearing glasses right now. No, these are Do not. They have a light. Are they they have a I checked him on Wednesday night when we were doing snap judgments because I thought <laughs> it's not I thought there was a weird reflection and like why are you recording the camera? Is this some sort of backup? I don't I don't get it. Never be never be too prepared. Um, I, I think Rutgers probably does get his points via special teams or maybe some kind of special teams things puts them in a position to score a touchdown they otherwise wouldn't. The only touchdown they scored against Michigan uh, was like on a busted coverage explosive play, I think, early in that game. Otherwise, they had a really hard time moving the ball and, and threatening the score. And I think that that is more or less what's going to happen here against Ohio State's defense. I'm not really worried about that side of the ball at all. For me, it's all about like what can Ohio State do against what I think is, is a solid defense for sure. Like maybe the numbers – overstate how good Rutgers actually is but I, but I think they're solid I don't I don't know that Rutgers is going to beat itself on defense so I'm, I'm curious to see how that plays out for Ohio State's offense um Rutgers is six one and one against the spread this year which makes me a little nervous hmm. um Ohio State seven of its eight games have gone to the under Rutgers is more like four and four but I'm 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 a cover for Ohio State but not terribly confident in it um I'm more confident in the under because I think that total is just all about what Ohio State's going to do, and and they've not really been good at hitting the over this year. So I, I feel pretty good about that still. Do you guys think that sometimes Michigan busts a cover just to like we're going to keep them off the scent right here? Like, yeah, it's we can't get a hundred percent right. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we didn't know that play. Yeah, <laughs> Your Honor. We'd like to bring in Exhibit Six, uh, busted coverage against Rutgers. <laughs> didn't know it. Maybe playing chess. They're playing chess in Ann Arbor. Uh, all kind right. of. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they have a camera on your pawns. 4220, <laughs> I'm way over. I'll talk about it more on my props. The 20 for Rutgers is Gavin Wimsat set like, you know, he busts out a 36 yard run somewhere. Um, special teams maybe does something. Rutgers plays all 60 minutes and scores a touchdown in the final three minutes kind of thing. I it, It's not like an indictment of the Ohio State defense. Oh my gosh, they gave up 20 to Rutgers. It's more like, I do think Wimsett is, is interesting. He's the exact kind of quarterback Rutgers needs to have. You get in a guy like that, you play him every snap you can his whole life and hope by the time he's a senior that he really has a chance to do something. I mean, he's like a, he's like a really interesting player. Is he going to consistently like move the ball down the field against the Ohio State secondary? No, but I think he could bust one or two. And then, you know, something goofy happens. So the 20 might seem high, but I think like that, that combined with, I do think the Ohio State offense is going to wake up a little bit in the past game is pushes me like way over on this. So I, I really like the over here, but uh, I, again, to note, I have not been very good at this this year. So those are our picks 38 to six for Austin, 31 to seven for Landis, 42 to 20 for me when we come back we'll get inside the game a little bit more with some uh, some ohio state props we'll do that next on the pick show on the podcast all right time to make some ohio state prop picks here on the pick show on the podcast again uh austin is you know he's kind of the guy that you can listen to a little bit more than maybe you would listen to me and landis austin overall is uh eight and eight on his ohio state picks this year landis is um Landis and I are like less than that. We'll just say that's, that's okay. Bill, is that just enough to than. say? We're just less than that. And yeah, then generally right. speaking, as we do it on this show, the whole thing we do is we make five picks, the Ohio State spread, the Ohio State total, two Ohio State props, and then a Northern bet. We're betting 10 bucks fake. Well, sometimes we might bet our real things. Each Austin's betting is indeed. He's I, I'm betting. He's betting. <laughs> uh, so, we, so it's 50 bucks each week that we're betting. And then like, what's our bankroll? Austin's ahead. 
$77.97 up. I am down 63.46. Bill is down 97.99. Austin won last week again, made money. Bill and I lost money. So, Austin, what do you have for your Buckeye props against Rutgers? Uh, yeah, I'm. I liked a lot of the options on FanDuel. There were some some deep ones, some new ones that I hadn't really included before. But I went with an old reliable off the bat, and I think that that's going to be a chip train them anytime touchdown. Uh, I got that for plus 200 on FanDuel. Uh, and Bill alluded to some of these rushing numbers, and Rutgers has been you know, productive against the teams that they've played. Like You can't argue that. So I looked at the two losses, and the common thread there was Michigan. Uh, Michigan ran for 201 yards and two touchdowns. Do we have to take some of that with a grain of salt? Maybe, but they have two good backs, and they were probably going to run the ball against most anybody, no matter what scheme they have. Uh, Got word from Connor Stallions, Rutgers might be running. So then I looked at Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin ran for more yards, the most yards I think that, or at least more than Michigan did. I think I think it was the season high. Wisconsin ran for 212 yards and a touchdown in that game. It was low scoring. Rutgers was able to keep them out of the end zone. So uh, largely keep them out of the end zone in that game. It was 24 to 13. Wisconsin won. So I think that they'll they'll do a good job. And if that's the case, and they limit explosives. That means probably a lot more plays inside the 10, inside the 5, trying to punch it in. That's where I think Chip Trainum maybe gives a slight edge over Travion Henderson in Ohio State's mind. So uh, I expect another good game from Travion, but I think that Chip will will maybe vulture one or, or earn it off of some of these other looks that we've seen as Ohio State gets creative in the red zone. So I've, I've got, I'm back on Chip for the first time since Notre Dame. That one paid. Uh, and then I went with a, a, a Maserati. That, that, that one paid, baby. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed that one paid <laughs> by an inch on the last play of the game against ten defenders. Cash it. It's like <laughs> sometimes you need a good time. Sometimes you need a good sweat. I can promise you, at the moment when it went in, I wasn't thinking about the pick show because I had seventeen different things I was trying to put together in the store and snap judgments that were about to go live. I didn't realize it until I got down to the concourse and I was like, oh yeah. I picked Chip Train a many time touchdown and he got it on the last play. Um, thanks to Mo Marcus Freeman and Al Washington. Um, so Maserati Marf, super boost. Uh, floor it this week. Mm. FanDuel. He's going over 104 and 104.5 yards. And I don't just want an anytime touchdown throughout the game. It didn't give me enough juice. I want a first half touchdown from Marvin Harrison Jr. He has five of those already this year. Ooh. Uh, and I think that Ohio State is going to be looking to get him involved early and often because as you're starting to look at some of the injuries mounting elsewhere, like if you can get some guys some rest, and again, I think Rutgers is a fine team. It's a competitive team. They're going to fight. But there's a, there's going to be a Heisman Trophy campaign launched soon. You can bet on that, I think. Uh, don't know what the odds are, but you should bet on it. I think Ohio State's going to throw some energy behind him. Uh, and they should because he's one of the best players I've ever seen. He's also gone in this last four-game stretch uh, since the injury at Notre Dame, which doesn't seem to bother him at all. The lowest total that he's had in yardage is 105 against Purdue. So he's been over 104.5 four weeks in a row. He's going to get the football. He's going to make plays. And he's going to hit this same game parlay for plus 280 on FanDuel. Like them, you've been pretty good at these things. So, uh, you know, write these down in pen. Landis and I are a little more in pencil. Bill, what are your Ohio State props? <clears throat> uh, I, I've also got my myself a nice uh, Maserati Mar single game parlay. Um, I went with the anytime touchdown, mostly because I didn't know that the first half touchdown was an option. And if I did, I probably <laughs> would have jumped on that too. Um, <clears throat> uh, all the all the things that Austin said about Marv and his and his yards production um, over the last few weeks have have influenced me here. He did only have three catches for eighteen yards against Rutgers last year um and i think emeka buka led ohio state with 70 receiving yards in a rather lopsided win for ohio state last year against Rutgers. mayan williams scored five touchdowns in that game if i'm not mistaken um so i don't know maybe maybe, maybe there's less uh real estate to throw the football in this game than, than i think there's going to be i'm slightly worried about that but um marv just feels very bankable at the moment with with this production i think he is like a minimum 12 targets per game kind of guy now and and probably more than that honestly is kyle mccord looks to to get a little better a little more efficient i think he's going to keep looking marv's way to do that and and the re-emergence of emeka Ibuka, i think could give 
Marvin Harrison Jr. a little bit more space uh, to, to operate in this game. So 104.5 on the yards and an anytime touchdown of plus 154 on FanDuel is my first prop bet. And then the second one, um, I probably should not be in a world where I'm placing any bets that don't give me uh, plus odds with, with the way my bankroll is. But uh, this one felt like a pretty easy cash to me. Gavin whims at over 17 and a half rushing yards. I just think he's going to have like 10 to 12 carries in this game. And I suppose he could get sacked enough by Ohio State's front that the rushing total is impacted by that. But but I don't think he's going to average like one yard per carry. And I think he's going to get close to double digits, if not more than that, in this game. Because I think that's that's a, a wrinkle that Rutgers can throw to Ohio State's defense that it hasn't seen so far this year. And he went like over 160 last week against Indiana. This just felt very low to me. So not a lot of juice. It's minus 114. Uh, on FanDuel, but I felt like it was a pretty reasonable bet given the way that Gavin Wimsat has played this year. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good one. I think like if they if he doesn't have at least 18 rushing yards for Rutgers, they might have negative points. Like he, yeah. he he's their <laughs> chance to pop anything against this Ohio State defense. I'm also kind of on the Marv train here with my prop bets, but really it's more a Kyle McCord bet because I do think this is going to be a little bit of a bounce back for Kyle McCord and this passing game. Uh, Bill and I talked a lot about the idea of does Ohio State just like need to get the ball out quicker and do that kind of thing. And and I was asking Kyle McCord about the play where he ran on third down, uh, got the first down uh, last week and then got tackled and re-aggravated the ankle injury. And he was like, yeah, that was supposed to be like a quick pass. They covered it. When they covered it, I decided to take off. And it was like that was like very well executed right up to the point that a dude fell on your leg. So. I think maybe they're going to be coming around on this. So I you know, was also sort of asking questions this week of like, do you game plan explosive plays? Do they kind of happen by accident? And of course, the answer is, well, it's both. Sometimes Ryan Day was really saying, sometimes you just really execute something. And even the big Trey run last week wasn't, it was just an inside run that they really blocked up. So Rutgers does not give up explosive plays, right? They haven't given up one of 40 yards or more. So I don't think this is like try for explosive plays, but I think we might be in a zone of Rutgers defense is good enough to get Ohio State focused. They didn't like the way Kyle didn't like the way he played last week. And we are in the high execution zone of the Ohio State offense. Get it out. Get it to dudes. Let them do stuff. And that's how they get explosive. So this is my Ohio State Kyle McCord bounce back passing parlay. Mm. Kyle McCord over 240.5 passing yards. Marv over the 104.5 receiving yards. Kyle uh, Cade Stover over the 44 and a half receiving yards. Three way parlay plus 309. So, because to me, it's like if Kyle's going to have a big game, and again, it's only over 240, I don't think he's going to throw for 400, as you said, Austin. But yeah. if he's going to throw for 290, I mean, it probably needs to include a healthy chunk of Marv and a healthy chunk of Cade anyway. Right now, Mecca's going to get in there. Maybe he drops some stuff off the tray. I do feel like there are some questions this week, Austin, of like, well, does Marv need to even get more targets than he gets? Does Cade need more targets? Does Travion need more targets? Do the <laughs> other receivers need more targets? I was like, well, they don't throw 70 times a game. Yeah. They I do know. have to take turns a little bit. But – I'm on. This is my. I think we see sort of like the best version of the Ohio State passing game that we've seen all year. I think we see it against Rutgers. Did you get concerned at all on Wednesday night watching Cade Stover with that large knee brace on his right leg and limping pretty noticeably? Okay. I think we've covered this before. <laughs> I'm bad at noticing things on Wednesday. You could have mentioned this before now. <laughs> I look. He's going to play through it and he's had a little, he's been banged up since Notre Dame. I don't think, you know, that's a mystery. And then coming off of the physicality of Penn state, I, I think there was a more, more of a hangover effect than maybe we were considering for Wisconsin last week. And it maybe made that win more impressive than it looked in real time. Uh, so even though he's not been full strength, he's those previous three weeks, he was still a very dangerous weapon. And when Ohio State is at full capacity on the passing attack, uh, Cade Stover is a key part of that. So, if if you ha if you are in a world where Cade's going to play, Ameka's back out there, teams are worried about Marvin Harrison. That's what made Cade Stover such easy money for the first seven wins of the season. Like that, he was, you know, I guess he didn't go over in all of them, but pretty close at least at least five times, probably six. Uh, he is a key part of this attack. So. 
if you're betting on the Ohio State passing attack bounce back, you would assume that Cade would be part of that, whether he's 85% or, or 90% or whatever it is, because he's not going to say. And I do think when you have a week where a guy doesn't get a target at all, they make sure the next week we're going to target right. this guy. And I think they'll they'll design like he had like the 40 yard play on sort of the touchdown, the tight end throwback earlier this year. I think we see one of those. So that's plus 309 for the Ohio State passing parlay bounce back. The other one is sounds crazy. It's four TDs total <clears throat> combined in each half at plus 650. And that might sound crazy, but Ohio State and Rutgers have played nine times. This has happened four of the nine. <laughs> and you're getting plus 650 for a thing that's happened almost half the time. Last year, there were five touchdowns in the first half and three in the second half. So it didn't hit, but it was close. So I think what needs to happen here is a game needs to be close enough that Ohio State does not completely shut it down in the middle of the third quarter. And if I'm predicting Rutgers to score 20, then I think that happens. So I I just think like it might be dicey, but at plus 650, I'll roll the dice for a thing. It's not like it never happens, right? So yeah. you got to make moves. We, it's that time of the year. Juice. I didn't know we could go chase this much juice, man. Yeah. You guys are. You're the ultimate juice chaser. You would chase. No, but I, you guys too. are putting together like five leg parlays to yeah. get. Yeah. Hey, uh, to be fair, I, we hit a 650 a on the. You 650 on the, this guy hit. On the great Iowa Hawkeyes. Like that's, and sometimes don't you just have to find the right two. I don't have a five-leg parlay coming. I have a seven-leg parlay coming. Later, <laughs> so get it right. All right. Those are Ohio State prop bets. When we come back, one Northern bet next on the pick show. All right. Again, we'll start our Northern bets with the guy who's making dough. $77.97 ahead for the season. Austin Ward, what's your northern bet? And what are you going to do now that Brian Ferentz is gone? Get your hazmat suits ready. <laughs> Landis really loved this when I, I teased what might be coming. Uh, yeah, the, the Ferentz factor has thrown me for a loop. I That felt like I was ready to get back on the horse and, and uh, enjoy the chaos. So mm. I can't leave it all behind because... You do have to pay attention to the West race. In the, and I mentioned this last week. Uh, it could very well come down if the round robin is split between uh, Penn State, Michigan, and Ohio State. That it, the teams that they play in the West could de determine who wins the East. So uh, it's getting really interesting. That race has tightened up, and the the leading contenders in my mind, they're all on the road this week. Mm. Mm, boy, should you stay away? Chaos happens over there. Like anything can happen when you go on the road to play teams in the Big Ten. Well, they're all going to win. Iowa money line in Wrigley Field at Northwestern. I guess I don't. Why are they doing that, Doug? Why are they playing at Wrigley? Because <clears throat> it's cool. It's cool because Ryan Fields for the hot dogs. Are they staying on the same sideline again, like right next to each other and and shaking hands? I, I think so. It didn't last like they did it. The first they time they did to. it, they all they went to the same end zone the whole like didn't you play the, yeah. the whole game was played one direction? It's wedged in, brother. I don't know. Northwestern just what, trying to rally the troops. What would Connor Stallions do if the teams were on the same side? He'd be in the <laughs> well, he'd be in the Ivy. That's like, why is that man <laughs> who's what? Yeah. Um, all right. Iowa money line, Wisconsin money line at Indiana, and Nebraska money line at Michigan State. Again. The limitations of these teams, I think they're fairly well known, and so I don't love the spreads for any of them, um, just because of they're not going to blow anybody out, in my opinion. And going on the road, it just you never know what kind of strange things can occur. So I do think they will all find ways to win, even Iowa, which is the kings of doing that in some respects. Um, maybe they'll be motivated. I, I like what Northwestern's done; they've been gritty, but uh, I. Iowa's defense and special teams are still really special. And I think that sometimes they don't get the attention they deserve because of how ghastly, horrifically bad the offense has been. Uh, but that keeps them in all those games, obviously. And I think that they'll they'll grind it out. So I've got those three teams at the top of the West all winning, all on the road, all on the money line for plus 219 on DraftKings. And and again, Austin's been been on this whole West thing. He's the king of the West. Landis, what are you the king Also, of? Wyoming on Friday night is going to win by 45 in the border war. Go, oh. folks. Okay. Uh, Landis, what you got? I want to tell you guys a story. Um, oh. 
back in I, I I can't remember if this was the first legal wager I ever placed. It, it is among the first. Back in 2019, uh, Ohio State was playing at Nebraska, and we were staying in Omaha. Myself and my my pal and yours, Ari Wasserman, went to Council Bluffs, Iowa, to uh, partake of the sports book at one of the casinos over there. And Penn State was playing at Maryland on a Friday night. Penn State was a six and a half point favorite in that game, and I was certain that Mike Loxley and those boys. We're not only going to cover, but they were going to win that game. Mm. And I placed I placed a wager as such. Ari joined me in that wager, and Penn State won fifty nine to nothing. <laughs> and you never bet again. And I never bet again. <laughs> we were uh, we were already friends. What are you doing betting on Mike Loxley? <laughs> I've learned. I've learned. I've learned since then. Um, Penn State is going on the road to Maryland this week. They're an eight and a half point favorite. Uh, my parlay is Penn State minus the eight and a half and Drew Aller over one and a half touchdowns. Uh, I think Penn State's going to steamroll Maryland. Uh, they've played three times in College Park since Maryland has joined the Big Ten. The scores are 66 to 3, 59 to nothing, and 31 to 14 uh, in favor of Penn State. They win comfortably there. Sometimes they win by an embarrassing amount of points when they play there. And I think that might happen this week. I think Maryland, since it lost to Ohio State, has been in full on quit mode. And Penn State, though, it did struggle with Indiana last week. I think that was a little bit of a body blow kind of game and, and not quite getting over the loss to Ohio State. They pulled out a, a, a close win late against Indiana, and now I, I kind of think they get rolling a little bit here as they, they try to build up to the Michigan game in a couple weeks and just put it on Maryland, and Drew Aller takes a step forward as a passer. So that's plus 147 for that parlay on FanDuel. All right, so mine is like kind of a combination of what Austin did and Landis did, and that's why it's seven teams. So <laughs> it is a seven-team Northern money line parlay. This is taking all these teams just to win. The result is plus 300 on FanDuel. These are the games. I'm going to give you the lines, but you're not taking the spreads. You're just taking to win. So Penn State against Maryland. Penn State's minus 8.5 just to win. Oregon against Cal. Oregon's minus 24.5. Air Force against Army. Air Force is minus 18 and a half. Michigan against Purdue. Michigan's minus 32 and a half. Wisconsin against Indiana. Wisconsin's minus nine and a half. Oregon State against Colorado. Oregon State's minus 13 and a half. And then the one, if you just do all like double digit spreads on the money line, you can put 11 games together and you still barely get even odds. <laughs> so I put in Minnesota minus two against Illinois. I do think we had a discussion this week. I just think people think don't realize that Minnesota is a pretty darn good program and Illinois feels like they're in free fall too. So that's basically a toss up game. So that's the one that could trip you up. But if you hit all seven, it's plus 300. And I think like five of them are absolute sure things. And maybe Minnesota and Oregon state make you a little nervous. Do you like these kind of bets, Austin? Or do you think I don't want to be on a show with him anymore? No, I do. <laughs> I do like it. I mean, you can't, if that's the way you feel and it is hard, like the spreads, they don't the Vegas, the, the the odds makers, they don't get everyone right. It's really trendy on Saturdays to be like, hey, Vegas knows when something happens and it hits exactly on the number. But there is variance, but they try to make it as close to 50 50 as possible. So I think that they are a good way to, you know, have a little bit more skin in the game and and find some plus odds on games that are expected to be a blowout. Like use them to get yourself a little more juice. Like that's uh I, I do that. Uh, Berm does it with 20 teams, and guess what? He loses every single time because oh. sometimes that's too far. Uh, although he did, I'm sure he'll chime in and say that he's made money this week, which is encouraging. Ooh. Berm? Money no, he maker? Doesn't wanna, he doesn't want to brag about it. Oh, he no, did. I, I'm bragging. Um, <laughs> I, I, just, I, did a, uh, I did two bets on, on Wednesday night Maction, a just simple money line, TD scorer, and, uh, and yardage for the running backs who I thought would score and I hit them both. So I, I needed a, a frenetic Akron uh, comeback to win that one, but I got it. Good vibes. Good vibes for us. Yeah. We're all winning right. this week. Yeah. That's right. All right. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's how we're all going to win this week. Berm's kicking it off and we're going to follow it up. We, we would invite you guys to partake of our coverage this weekend. That will include uh, some pregame stuff from Piscataway, Austin. That's the plan as usual, right? Yep. Berman, I'll get to the stadium about 
nine. Hopefully, we'll have the availability report ready to go to talk about that and the impact for the Buckeyes as we do the pregame keys. Um, we're able to find some pretty nice spots to set up uh, there in the past. Uh, certainly, two years ago, I remember it was it was pretty cool. And uh, it, for for some of the things that I joke about with Rutgers and the crazy long walk from the locker room that Ohio State has, like. There have been pretty good coverage opportunities for us at these games, and um, it, it's generally gone off without, without a hitch. So knock on wood that that will be the case for pregame keys uh, and then some snap judgments and the notebook afterwards. So I, for those of you who haven't seen it, I promise right now that I will include on the notebook a tour of how long and arduous and dangerous the walk is from Ohio State's locker room down to the field. Danger? Ooh, that's exciting. Be careful. I... Well, I don't have cleats on. I, that's where the danger is. There's, it's like those slick plastic covered stairs that they all have to go down to get to the next level. And I'm like, boy, I would really be scared if I had like spikes and cleats and spats trying to go down here. Like I'd be, I'd be eating it for sure. Thank goodness Ohio State doesn't have three key players with lingering ankle injuries on those stilts. <laughs> uh, and then, Bill, people can join you and I on the post game show. Yeah, you can join us. Uh, there's, there's actually. Um, an excellent triple header on CBS this week, kicked off by Ohio State Rutgers, and then it's Alabama or Georgia, Missouri, and then Alabama, LSU. So you can join us on the post game show while Missouri's beating Georgia. It'll be great. Oh yeah, no, definitely yeah. As we said, you got Alabama, you got Georgia. units on that. I will. Oh, I love that. <clears throat> I have. A, I took both. Yeah. No, I took. I took uh, LSU and. Missouri on the money line. One of the two is going to hit. Uh, so thanks as always to you guys for joining us here for our Ohio State coverage. We just bring you a whole bunch of stuff during the week, and that uh, certainly includes this pick show. We'll catch it this weekend for Jeremy Birmingham, making it all work for Austin Ward and Bill Landis. I'm Doug Maurice, and that was the pick show on the podcast.